welcome back to Love and Romance Tarot Readings. I am excited to get into today's reading because today we are getting into your next spicy encounter in love. So we're tapping into exactly what's going to happen for you. My Etsy shop is in the description. If you'd like your own private tarot reading or if you need any custom spell work done, that is where you can find me. Other than that, pause the video if you need more time with the piles. You can always pick more than one pile. We have group one with the pink stone. Group two with the yellow stone. Group three with the blue stone. And group four with the light blue stone. Reflective light blue stone for group four. So like I said, you know, pause the video if you need more time with the piles, but we're just gonna get started. Your next spicy encounter in love. All right, if you chose group one with the pink stone, this is your reading, your next spicy encounter in love. What is happening? Who is this? That's what we're going to tap into first. Spirit, show us who this person is. Who is this energy coming in for group one? Their next spicy encounter. Who is the other person in this picture with them? For group one spirit. The next spicy encounter. Who is that with? <clears throat> oh, wow. You know what? Interestingly enough, you guys got a lot of, um, you guys got a lot of serious cards. At the bottom of the deck, we have affectionate. It says, I am very open with showing you how I feel. But all of your cards before are like kind of hinting at a serious connection. So for you, group one, someone may have to be committed in order to even have any sort of spicy encounter with you. We got dedicated and trustworthy. Dedicated says, I only have eyes for you. Trustworthy says, you can trust me. So this is someone that you trust. This is someone who has showed their dedication, show, someone who has showed their genuine desire to be with you. More than desire, like this person has showed what they're willing to do. They, they've made an investment um, into you at this point. We have balanced and hardworking. This is giving like partner material, relationship material. This is giving boyfriend, girlfriend, fiance, husband, wife, long-term partner, serious committed relationship energy. Like this isn't just like some friends with benefits or fly by the night character just kind of popping in. This feels more permanent. It feels like a connection that has been worked on. Balance says I'm consistent with my emotions and actions. And then hardworking says all I know is putting in work. So this person works a lot, but they're balanced. Like this person, they like to meal prep. They like to go to the gym. This person is trustworthy. You can, you know, trust them to take home one of your friends and know that nothing shady is going to happen. I don't know why that's the example that like pulled up. That's very specific. Maybe someone had a bad experience or seen something like that really caused you to side eye men or women or people in general, something like that, where it was like someone had someone take their friend home and some shady business happened. Anyways, this person is trustworthy. And then we got needy. I need all of your attention is what that says. So they put you as a priority and they want to be a priority in your life as well. To be honest, group one, this feels like a serious romantic partner and it's funny because I'm like trying to get into the spice for this reading and spirit is like oh we have a you know a, a distinguished gentleman here we have like you know someone who's actually worthy of you coming in providing you um your next spicy encounter in love but we'll keep pressing for it We'll keep going, but I like this reading. Okay, so we have polite and reserved. This person is giving like freak in the sheets type of energy where it's like, okay, this person, they may come off as really nice. A lot of people may see them as like totally innocent and harmless, but when it comes to you and the fun that you have with them, the version that you get of them, the version that you get to see is very different. 
than what other people get to see. Polite says, I'm always courteous and respectful. Reserved says, I am calm and composed. So Spirit, show me how this person is giving group one a spicy encounter. How is this a spicy encounter? How is this affecting them? <clears throat> We got the 12th house of surrender. Wow, that is so deep, you guys. Your idea of spicy is being in a serious, committed relationship with someone. That, you know, brings more butterflies or anxiety or fear or like those feelings of, you know, that's, that's the spicy for you. Uh, there's like an energy of, you guys, you know, dating people and it's like, yeah, you know, we can have some hot passion together and, you know, whatever, whatever. But the real like stuff is like when someone's committed. <laughs> We got the 12th house with surrender. The 12th house is about the subconscious mind, dreams, karma, uh, trance states, baggage, the unseen, healing, and spiritual development. This person may come through with some sexual healing. It also says uh, Akashic Records on here. It also says prayer. Um, so some of you guys may get into some sacral magic. Some of you guys may use your sacral or sensual energy like for yourself or for magical purposes, but this person is bringing you healing through your intimacy, through their presence, through the sp spicy encounter. But I feel like what makes this so spicy is that 12th house subconscious mind and like the trance state. There's an energy of this person kind of, you know, there's an energy of this person coming in and really shocking you with how dependable they are and how much they want you and how they're just ready to move forward. It was unexpected for whatever reason. You may have decided that it just wouldn't happen for you and then it's happening. So it's like really strange. And it's like, it's, it's just like one of those times in your life where you look around and it's like, this is not real. Like, have you, have you ever done that? Like, have you ever looked in the mirror and been like, I'm looking at myself right now or have you ever looked at a landscape or your life and been like I'm really alive right now at this party or I'm really awake right now doing this grocery shopping like whatever it is it kind of feels just like freaky like that I don't know why I'm getting like just oh, oh what was that old show black mirror I'm getting like black mirror vibes where it's like this is something that would happen in a parallel universe and that's the surrender of it all and the fact that you're actually getting that kind of like dream experience that you gave up a while ago like <laughs> it's making you feel out of body it's it's very different also you guys may vibe together you guys may you know get into some sort of like mind altering things together you know you may go on a trip together if you know what i'm saying you may trip together. <laughs> um, you may dabble in some Piscean, Neptunian type of, you know, vibe where it's like, okay, we're exploring the unknown. We're exploring the ocean depth, our subconscious, our hidden desires. We're activating each other in ways that we never have before. This is going to be very, very spicy. So we have Venus with love and Mercury with communication. So this person is a talker. Okay. This is the person that's going to whisper things in your ear, not the person that's going to like keep quiet all, you know, all the time when you guys are kissing or when you're close together, whatever it is that you're doing, they are very wordy. They want you to know how they feel and what they're thinking and what they like and all of that. Mercury with communication, it says words, thoughts, information, learning, ideas, awareness, vision. So curiosity, muse, and wonder. You could be an artist, they could be an artist, or they could be the inspiration towards something that you do in the future. Um, that's very interesting. I feel like I could just like tap into that and take like 10 more minutes <laughs> just on that alone, but we'll keep going. We got Venus with love. So this one's about beauty, harmony, romance, charm, receiving, sensuality, luxury, wealth, magnetism, like just being in this person's presence. It feels out of body. It feels otherworldly. Um, this person may have 
a big savings or a huge amount of investments to where soon as you guys, like you guys could have known each other for a month and they're kind of like just providing for you, like taking care of you. This can mean um, helping you mentally. This could mean financially. This could be mean spiritually. This could mean that they're holding space for you emotionally. Not everyone's dream is to be taken care of. Some people are like full on individuals and they want to shine on their own and have their own thing. So if that is you, this person is going to make it even more possible for you to shine and put yourself out there and to just be you. Spirit, tell me more about the spicy encounter for group one. <laughs> Can you show me how this is coming together? Well, we have the Six of Cups at the bottom of the deck and the Hermit card here, which is very telling. This lets me know that you were likely supposed to meet this person um, at an earlier time. Ten of Wands in reverse, you may have fumbled, they may have fumbled, so you're coming back together. Maybe it just didn't go anywhere. Queen of Swords in reverse, per, uh, potentially you uh, sabotaged it, they sabotaged it. Or I'm also getting an energy of an offer, like they may have gotten a job offer somewhere, or you may have. Um, so you may have had to leave the job you worked at them with or leave the city that you worked in and vice versa. But we have the Knight of Pentacles, so it's kind of like... You know, what's for you won't miss you. It's still coming back around Six of Cups. So this could be someone you went to school with, someone you've dated, someone you've worked with, someone you've lived with. <clears throat> like um, in a dorm or uh, as a roommate situation. Someone you know from the past. But also for some of you, like I said, I was feeling an energy, Ten of Wands in reverse. This is kind of like something outside of your control. Like you can't even do anything about it. It's a huge obstacle or struggle. <clears throat> so that could be something happened in the world that put you on a different course. That's been happening a lot lately. It's been happening a lot lately. And, and as soon as you start talking about things, then things get weird, like in your personal life. So, you know, shout out to. The spiritual people who are still sharing those like really risky messages, but that's been happening a lot lately where there's been these like crazy things happening in the world and they're causing these resets. And it's, it's not even a reset because it's just like it's causing these shifts where timelines shift dramatically and everything's out of whack. So it's like impossible for someone to manifest something fully without a connection to a certain source. Um, because these things keep happening, shifting everyone out of alignment. Anyways, if you know, you know, if you don't, it's not what we're talking about today. Anyways, spirit, what else can you tell me? How is the spicy encounter coming together? Well, what I can see is that it's coming soon for you guys. Soon as in, I would say like soon, soon. Uh, we have the lovers in reverse and the ten of swords in reverse. Wow, four of wands in reverse. Something got really messed up here. This is giving me, honestly, X energy. This is giving me an energy of someone you may have just gotten off yet another cycle with that X that you know you shouldn't have been talking to, that X that steals up all of your time and puts you another year in the rears um, or vice versa. Like this showing up romantically like this is really making me feel like there is a person that has been in the way or an addiction to something that's putting you out of alignment with love. Um, and of course, once everything comes together, wow, we have the Empress at the bottom of the deck. So you've been, you know, standing strong. You've been, I, I feel like this is a rising energy with the Empress at the bottom where it's like, okay, the goddess has been coming through to help you. The goddess in yourself, the goddess outside of you. But a lot of feminine energy has been at play. This could be an energy of, you know, like I said, you're someone, ugh, I keep hearing spell work, damn it. <laughs> and I'm not a spell work type of reader. I don't read on like those ghetto ass timelines like that. But I keep hearing that. So that is true for someone where maybe someone did spell work on, you know, the person you were supposed to be with. So they got trapped, you know, in <clears throat> something putting you back or 
maybe you messed around with it and then you had to wait for the karma to play out and clear so that you can move forward. There's definitely lessons being learned. There's a lot of karmic energy with this spread group one. But we have the Nine of Cups and the Ten of Swords in reverse. So things as of now are clear. It's so interesting that both of your tens showed up in reverse as well. You may be seeing 1010 or 999-111. Spirit, what will this person bring into their life? Nice. I'm hearing strength, courage, and wisdom. That's a song. Whose song is that? I don't want to pull out my phone, but um, that's literally the name of the song. I just don't want to butcher it. I'm like, who is that? Is that India or Oh, Don't give me the line. Um, but we have blessings and new beginnings, and we have courage. So this person, as far as what they're bringing into your life, they're bringing confidence, confidence in yourself, confidence in, you know, spirit, really, confidence that, you know, something and things can work out for you. For some of you, this feels like a second chance. For some of you, this feels like a do-over. Someone is definitely lucking out in this deal. I'm telling you, like, whoever you're partnered with, you're going to be able to tell, like, if they're up or if you're up. But someone is, like, getting seriously lucky with the partner that they're getting. Um, but we have the blessings card. So this person is bringing gifts. This person is bringing in partnership. They're bringing in love. Like I said, they're taking care of you. And it's just so funny how your reading is going because it's like, oh, your next spicy encounter in love. And we got a little bit of that. But really, like, spicy to you is oddly, like, commitment. Um, so we got the New Beginnings card here as well. You're starting over in New Beginnings with them. I would say... New beginnings in the way that your mind works because this person is coming in with a lot of security. So imagine a world where you can live your life without worrying about like bills, without worrying about, I have to do this because I have to pay for that. So I don't have time to do, you know, all the things that my heart desires or I can't act on every download that I receive because I have very real, you know, obligations. But imagine a world without those obligations because you have the financial security of this person, the emotional security of this person, the spiritual security, the space that this person, you know, brings to your life. I'm feeling a lot of gifts in that way. So there is going to be a difference in your mind and also a difference in your routine, a difference in your lifestyle, I feel, for a lot of you. And there's courage that you guys have again to kind of try again I feel like you just needed like one solid win you know and it's coming through the form of a relationship for you one solid win where it's like okay <clears throat> I can go for the other things that I've been called to you like I can pursue my life purpose or I can start reading again or getting back into my talents like there's this new found confidence you have through your blessing here that is coming out and we have the to be fair card so again wow we got the we got the blessed card from this deck so spirit is saying like literally blessings on blessings on blessings everywhere you turn just blessings and a lot of these feel financial but it's kind of hard to say because there's a mixed energy here like for for all of you it's going to be different essentially i see this person bringing in what you need the knight of pentacles also is sticking out to me because the knight of pentacles is something that kind of needs to be a co-creation you know, the Knight of Pentacles is not the king or the queen. It's not already programmed. It's still surrendering to the higher power. So I see you surrendering to the higher power, your pertinent person surrendering to the higher power, and you guys living in harmony because of that, because you're both surrendering to what's meant for you, but you're also creating something new for you in this time. You're not the older version of your, you're not the same version of yourself that you were even six months ago. So what you need in this time is different than, you know, even the last time you wrote it down or spoke to spirit about what it is that you wanted. <clears throat> and the to be fair card is definitely giving me like what comes around, like what goes around comes back around energy where it's like there was some sort of investment 
that you made in the past that's getting the reward in this time. <clears throat> Spirit, what else can you tell me about this spicy encounter? For you, group one, it really does look like a relationship um, is coming in. We have stand your ground. So spirit is really wanting you to commit to who you are and what it is that you want and the life that you decided that you were going to live moving forward. Spirit doesn't want you to backtrack on that because now you have some comfortability. Spirit wants you to you know, stand 10 toes deep in it because it's like, okay, now that you have the security to be that person that you've been calling out to be or now that you actually have, you know, these opportunities or these resources, are you really going to invest them the way that you said that you would? Invest them in helping other people, invest them in helping yourself. Are you really going to do that? Second chance opportunity. And remember, with the second chance opportunity does come redemption if you do things differently. Because it's a second chance, you know. There is still room for self-sabotage. We all have free will. We have it's okay to be alone. So some of you, honestly, that's like a mindset that's really benefiting you, you know what, if you if you need to stop, you know, just stop, stop watching certain content. If it's too much, like literally don't do it because if focusing on it too much is still making you feel like icky or out of alignment, go ahead and take that break or just kind of cut it out altogether. Um, but I don't mind this at all. And I don't see that as a red flag. It's okay to be alone because some of you need to think that way so that you don't take things so seriously because that's what causes you to obsess or self-sabotage. So I feel like that's fine to feel that way. And once this is here, you won't have to like guess about it because it's such a sure thing. So you'll be able to easily, you know, kind of navigate well, that is what I got for you, group one. Very different than what I expected, but still lovely, not the same. My Etsy is in the description if you'd like a private tarot reading or if you need a personal um, custom spell work. That is what you can find on there, um, amongst other things. But that's what I got for you guys today. I'll talk to you soon. All right, if you chose group two with the Yellowstone, this is your reading, your next spicy encounter in love. We're using the Steampunk Tarot for you. Let's see, Spirit, how is this going to affect their life, this spicy encounter? How are they receiving this spicy encounter in love? Oof, we got Taurus, the bombshell, and then we got Gemini, the butterfly. So we got Taurian earth energy and Gemini air energy, okay? So we got earth and air. We have the 11th house, the edge. Oh my goodness. This person is going to be very, very tempting. And with the edge, I can't help but to think about edging. If you've ever heard of that, you can look it up. But I can't help to think about that where this person is taking you to the very, very edge of everything, of desire, of want, of need, of yourself, out of your comfort zone. Goodness gracious. The 11th house, the edge, friendship, community, hope, festivals, discoveries, startups, rebellion, experimentation the future. This being in your 11th house, this being a 11th house spicy encounter, lets me know that this is going to be very radical and different. Like it says experimentation in the future. You may be developing foundational desires through this connection with this person or experiencing uh, foundational desires through this person. This person may make you feel like a sense of togetherness that you've never felt before. You can meet this person at a festival. You can meet this person through a discovery, like through um, you like trying a new coffee place, like say you're walking your normal route, but instead of going to your favorite like bagel shop, you go to a, like a different coffee place that you never go to. You can meet this person in a very Uranian, Aquarian kind of way where it's like you literally find them through wandering, you know, a different path. 
It also says startups on here. So this could be a connection that is based around um, a startup, like a, a new business. This could be someone investing in you or you investing in someone. And there is investment in present, by the way. You can still make an investment in someone who has their own startup, like, you know, just through the presence of friendship. You know what I mean? Like, no one's going to, I mean, people would, but in theory, no one's going to go to college without there being any, like, restaurants or parties or any, like, coffee shops or amenities, you know, like you're not going to go to college if it's literally just the classroom. And yeah, I know, like literally you would, but I'm talking about like the experience. You wouldn't look at it like, oh, that was my college days. It's going to be like, that's the worst time of, that was the worst time of my life. So anyways, there is, you know, ministry and just presence alone and just being there for someone. Um, we have Taurus, which actually I got that exact quote from Shia LaBeouf. He was talking about how he was in, I think, some sort of recovery program. And, you know, he was talking about how his own parents didn't show. But there was one person that he was working with at the time. I feel like maybe a director, he said, that came up and she was like, hey, Shia. And da, 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 da. So anyways, we have Taurus, the bombshell, earthy, practical, productive, fertile, worthy, ripe, pleasure seeking, seeking, sensuous, blooming, possessive, <laughs> loyal, patient, deliberate. This person is coming through with a strong like energy of I am here for you and I am down for you and you know I want whatever you want. Like I just want to be your favorite. I just want to be where your attention is. They're very people pleasing when it comes to you. That may not be like them and they they may not be like a people pleaser, but when it comes to you, it's like I do want to be everything to you. <laughs> We have Gemini, the butterfly, curious, communicative, social, brilliant, studious, superficial, street smart, fidgety, restless, vocal. This person is a big communicator. This person um, has very interesting perspective. That's like their strong suit, their perspective, what they bring to conversations, what they bring to friendships. That is what people really value about them. Let's see if we get anything else. Spirit. Wow, we got the seventh house. The seventh house, seventh house is all about relationships. Uh, the seventh house with the relating, it says partners, companionship, best friends, marriage, relationships, opposition, equilibrium, communion, balance. Wow, there's like an energy. And then the last thing it says on there is social awareness. So you may be uh, leveling up through this relationship, which is very interesting because when you, you're in a relationship, it really is like, you know, people do treat you different from where they invite you to, you know, who you meet and what they think you would be down for, interested in. It's very interesting how being in a relationship or being in a, you know, committed partnership or a marriage can shift where you can go and changes like how people react to you. So there may be some sort of like leveling up in a social way that you get through this relationship. People may look at you this, you know, it's taking me back like to the Tumblr days when people used to be obsessed with relationships and like post a bunch of different couple stuff. And like in the beginning of YouTube where there was like, you know, couple channels and prank channels and it wasn't like corny. It was like really entertaining and fun. <laughs> um, it reminds me of that spirit. Show me this person. Who is this person? Hmm. Oof. You guys, I ain't even gonna hold you. Jealousy has come up twice now in this reading. We have jealous and moody that came up. So this person does not like to share. They really don't. Jealous, I won't share you with others. And if I'm being honest, I feel like this like comes to friends and family as well. They don't like to share their time with you. They don't give people very many chances. So if someone were like were to play with you, play with your time, play with your resources, 
your partner is going to be like, I don't want you talking to that person. Like this person is going to be like, you don't need them anyway. So why are you talking to them anymore? I can do that. If you need someone to figure it out, I can figure it out. Like, I just want to be your everything. I want to be the bed that you sleep on at night. I want to be the air that you breathe. I want to be like the water on you in the shower. This person is so attached to you. And then Moody, you never know which personality you're going to get with me. So I do feel like this person can be like a little off the wall, very spontaneous and different. Whatever it is that they're feeling in the moment does kind of shape what you get with them. But we have easygoing, trustworthy, and wealth builders. So as long as you're not making them jealous, things will go smoothly. So for you, group two, if you had a problem with jealousy in the past where you would make your you know, partners jealous to spice up their relationship or to feel desired, or if you've always kind of liked all eyes on you to the point where even if you're committed with someone, you kind of like make them feel like they're on the same level as everyone else or could be replaced easy. If you have that tendency or if that has happened in the past, this person is not gonna have it like they are not but other than that <laughs> we got easygoing trustworthy and wealth builders so there's a lot of benefits to being with this person this person is someone you do want to have in your life a good value to you but only if they are like only if you are theirs and only theirs they can't do the jealousy thing to be honest they may have a mild anger issue um, easy going. I just want to get along and be cool, trustworthy. You can trust me. And then wealth builder. I like building wealth is what that one says. So this person, they like to make money. They like to keep busy. They like their routine. They like their habits. Um, they don't like to feel jealous. They don't know. They don't like to feel like their territory is being encroached on. Um, <clears throat> this person, they could be a lawyer. They could be a stickler about like, you know, the rights and the wrongs. They could be someone in enforcement or like some sort of protective services. Maybe they were in the military at some point. But they're just more straight edge and like rules based. They don't like feeling like... I keep hearing parameters as well, and I'm like seeing someone walk around a house. Your dad may have did that when you were younger, and it's like this person is doing that, and it's <laughs> oddly nostalgic for you, but I am seeing this person kind of go through the house. My grandparents used to do that. Before we would be able to go into the house, my grandpa would go through the entire house. Um, and it, this is like we could go to a restaurant, come back to, you know, to my grandparents' house, and he's like, no. Nope. Hold on, everybody. Got to go through the house real quick. Um, but this person is territorial like that. It doesn't surprise me with that Taurus energy. <laughs> uh, we have loyal, dependable, and stable. So overall, this person is a good person. I know some of you guys are nervous. Like, listen, I can't do the anger issues thing. I don't know. Maybe you'll get over it or you'll, you'll get used to it. Or maybe you'll just deny this person altogether. But I feel like um, there's a good you know, mix of the good and the bad. Loyal. I'm as loyal as they come. So this person doesn't have a wandering eye. They're not going to play you like that. They're not going to make you feel jealous. So it's not like they're, you know, setting you up with the rules that they're not also standing up to. Um, we have stable. I'm level-headed and even-tempered. Mm, debatable. I would say, if anything, this person is probably stable in more of a financial way. <laughs> and then we have dependable. You can count on me. So this is someone you can depend on, someone you can trust. Spirit. How is this coming together? What can you tell me? We have the Queen of Swords and the Strength card in reverse. So you're actually meeting this person because you couldn't wait. There's a little bit of a rush and it's working out for you. There's an energy of some of you like, you know what? I just want to put myself out there. I'm not waiting for like, you know, Prince Charming or, you know, some princess, whatever. I'm just going to date and I will surrender like me the best man or woman win. May the best person win. Whoever comes through with, you know, the energy that I need and what I like will be the one that I will move forward with. And it's as simple as that. You like, like just completely made it uncomplicated for yourself. 
and you just started dating. Queen of Swords is like very driven. I can do everything, you know, that I, I need on my end. So we do have the Five of Swords and the Tower in Reverse. Tower in Reverse is good because I do see that you are avoiding like um, <clears throat> any pitfalls with this. But I do see Five of Swords. There is a rush. So some of you are rushing in. And like I said, I do see it's still working out for you. But I don't know what the disadvantage would be of it. We have the Wheel of Fortune in Reverse at the bottom of the deck. So that lets me know like luck or divine timing or spirit kind of magically like that's not how this is coming together this is coming together because someone sought it out queen of swords whether that's you or the other person but i am seeing like five of swords is coming in at an awkward time or too soon or it's a bit messy so you could be getting right out of a relationship as this person is coming in or vice versa you know and it's like the attraction is there the compatibility is there seventh house eleventh house you're at the edge and you're ready and you want it so it's happening and it's working um but something about the timing or like the process is a little you know like not as not as good as it could be it's not like a union kind of blessed by spirit or i won't say not blessed by spirit but not brought together by spirit it's definitely brought together by someone's desire honestly by both of your desire <laughs> we have the king of cup and the Her king of cups and the hierophant so you two may be so powerful, you're like manifesting each other. It's giving like matrix energy. <laughs> it's giving like energy of when they touch, you know, in, in, in a certain existence together, like everything in the world just stops and, you know, they're so much more powerful together type of energy. Um, <clears throat> But with the Hierophant, you guys have leveled up in terms of your wisdom or in terms of your intuition. So it's like you guys are so smart or so connected. It's like you can feel something close to you. You can attract something to you just by feeling it and wanting it at this point because your power has really been growing. Spirit, tell me more about this encounter. Tell me more. <clears throat> we have the Queen of Wands in reverse. So once it's getting here, you're kind of scared. Like Ten of Wands, ooh, I don't know if I want this. I kind of want to just do my own thing. This person has a lot of pull when it comes to you, and that makes you a bit uncomfortable. Like how bad you want them, it's like, oh, it shouldn't be this way or it's not normal. I don't want to feel this way. Like there's a little bit of an energy of you wanting to avoid this person because you know how much power they have over you. The physical intimacy is going to be on 1000, very connected, very spicy, multiple times for hours, you know, days. Seriously, you guys may have a week where you just, hopefully y'all don't got jobs where, I don't know. We have the Seven of Wands, the Knight of Wands in reverse, and the Page of Wands, a lot of wand energy. What is a wand, right? Mm -hmm. Listen, okay. <laughs> uh, you guys may be inviting play into the relationship, inviting play um, or toys into your experiment with each other, experiencing each other. A lot of wand energy. Um, yeah, I'm like, what other way could I say that? We got the queen of uh, pentacles at the bottom of the deck. So someone definitely knows what they're doing and they're like a gold mine. This could be like a really flexible person. This could be someone with a really flexible body, really flexible schedule, really flexible emotionally. Someone who can also deal with, <clears throat> like if you have any problems with mood regulation this person it's like okay you get pissed they're not going to get pissed with you they could be upset but once they see that you're upset they're really flexible and that way they will you know shape uh themselves towards whatever is needed in the moment We have the High Priestess in reverse and the Two of Wands. So Spirit is saying there are two different ways that this can manifest in your life. It can come through, you know, your desire and you willing this in or it can come naturally. It's really up to you. 
there is risks both ways. I, I wouldn't say that there's risks both ways, but obviously if you wait for spirit, then you're waiting for spirit. You know, it's kind of like out of your control. Um, but also if you do all the work, then it's like, okay, who knows what that five of swords is really going to be, you know? <clears throat> It could be something that you don't see as a very big deal, something that you can deal with like, oh, okay, I don't mind that this person is freshly out of a relationship or getting out of a relationship right as we're meeting each other. I can I can deal with that. I'm not jealous or it could be, you know, something that is more of, you know, difficult for you. We have Joan of Arc with the voice of truth that says, stand strong, focus on your purpose and release the fear of persecution. Speak your truth. So spirit is saying, create it. If you're ready to create it, if you're at your wits end waiting, create it. You can create it yourself at this time. Stand up in your power and throw your weight around. Use your power. You are a co-creator. Co you can make this happen. You know, there will be disadvantages, but there's disadvantages with everything. Um, so Spirit is kind of calling you to be honest about what it is that you're wanting at this time and to move forward. We got faith, okay, with humanity and benevolence. Uh, it says, stay, tra uh, stay calm, trust in the good in yourself and others and see the light in the world. But with this, I really felt like this was like taking, I really felt the energy of this is taking uh, a leap of faith and tapping into your own power and doing something, you know, for yourself this time around where it's like, okay, I'm not waiting for spirit or I'm not waiting for, you know, my guides to bring it together. I'm going to go <clears throat> and I'm going to do what I feel like doing. We have Bridget with inner strength. So it says move back to wholeness, recognize that you have the power. Spirit is saying if you want to manifest this, if you want this to come through now, then just do it. Literally just do it. And you know what to do. You've learned so much at this point that you know what it is to do. And there's disadvantages to everything. So the situation can be a little rocky. But that's kind of something that, you know, even if the perfect relationship comes together, there's still going to be like uncomfortable aspects. Like say you meet the love of your life and spirit brings you together, but this person lives in another state. Well, though you met the love of your life and spirit brought the person to you, you still have to make a big, huge move. So there's still an uncomfortable aspect. So who's to say that it's, you know, better, at least for you personally, to wait for spirit versus creating this on your own and going out and getting it. Spirit is saying you do have that opportunity. This is a lucky time, though. You want to make your decision soon and act on it soon as far as what you want to do and if you want to, you know, do it on your own because the energy is potent around you now, so that can happen. You can quantum leap if you want to, if you're bold enough for it. So that is what I have for your group two. My Etsy is in the description. If you'd like your own private tarot reading, that is where you can find me. I also offer custom, custom spell work on there, manifestation candles, all sorts of stuff. But that is what I have for you guys. I'll talk to you soon. All right, if you chose group three with the blue stone, this is your reading. We're using the Gilded Tarot Royale for you. And we are going to see your next spicy encounter in love, Spirit. How is this encounter going to affect them? Where is this spicy encounter happening? How are they receiving this spicy encounter? Oh, wow. We have Chiron that came up. That's surprising for a reading like this with healing. Okay, Spirit. We got the first house. Wow, someone is coming in and making you feel beautiful. I'm also getting like a sexual healing kind of vibe where someone is kissing um, and appreciating your entire body. We got the 12th house with surrender. That's giving me like 50 shades of gray ropes energy, to be honest. <laughs> and then we have the second house with assets. Okay, let's be mature about this. This is talking about the real assets. <laughs> but, um, Okay, so that is how that is where you're having your your next spicy encounter in love. So let's break this down. Chiron really caught my attention. 
Kylie, Chiron is called the healed, no, sorry, the healed, the wounded healer. Um, Chiron is all about healing, but typically like that deep wounding. And a lot of the uh, healing that comes with Chiron um, typically comes from connections with people that have also been wounded, you know, people who also have like, um, gone through, you know, similar struggles or through like healing through shadowy type of experiences. Um, okay. So Chiron healing powers, growth, release, personal development, and inherited issues. Very interesting. You could have had a parent that had certain issues and that parent projected those issues onto you. So then they became your issues in your adult life, your issues, you know, in your life growing up, inherited issues. This could also be generational. Um, this could be like a spirit or an energy that has jumped through person to person in your family. Um, Self-doubt, generational trauma, sensitivity, superpowers, divinity, cleansing, softness, and pain. So Chiron is coming in here. This person is healing you. First of all, they're loving you through everything that you've been through. They're loving you through all of your experiences, all of your quirks, your desires, no matter how unique, no matter how weird, they will go there with you. This person is really good um, at holding space for you specifically, I'm hearing. Holding space for you to feel your feelings, your emotions, to go through your process. You may have a process and it's like, if you could just leave me alone so I could get through my process, I'll be fine. But you have exes in the past that would push past that process and they couldn't like they couldn't dissociate. They couldn't give you space. They had to try to force you to make a decision or to be through your process or happy, you know, sooner than, you know, the process would take you. And it's like, if the process is just allowed to go, like the healing will happen. I'll, I'll move past it. So this person is very respectful of you, your boundaries and what you need. And this is affecting you in your first house. Your first house is the house of self. Your first house is your rising sign. Um, it's, it's that space, that part of your chart, uh, your physical body, outlook, self-image, life, philosophy, consciousness, awakening, self-awareness, opinions, expression, gateway, and entry point. So this is going to be a new start for you. If you choose to keep this person in your life, if you choose to get in a relationship with this person and then, you know, it turns into a long term relationship and then you, you know, maybe get engaged and married to this person. I really feel like this would be the kind of couple that would move and start over your own life completely disconnected from like anyone from your past. So I see you guys kind of going into mission through this relationship and this is like the leg of your journey, the leg of your mission that is outside of your family, your loved ones, the people you grow up, grew up with. We got the 12th house of surrender and the second house of assets, which is very interesting. So this spicy encounter is affecting your assets. You may be joining together your assets with your partner. There is such a strong, you know, to be honest, I'm getting like what's understood doesn't need to be explained type of energy when it comes to defining this relationship because it's like, yeah, duh, we're in a relationship, but the word relationship doesn't really encompass the connection that you have with this person. This is really deep and you may desire like really deep connections. You may be like someone who can't really do the small talk thing, someone who doesn't like small talk or someone who likes to have deep, meaningful connections and conversations. And that's how this connection is. So it's like this person is so much more than my partner. Like they're my everything. It kind of feels like um, the second house of assets, the material world, possessions, finances, worthiness, wardrobe, luxury, credit score, security, aesthetics. You may be moving into this person's house. They may be moving into your house. You may be moving into a home together, starting a new life together. Um the material world and finance, something's going to shift there. I feel like you guys may be living together like less than six months of being in a relationship. This relationship is going to move really fast. And if I'm being like honest, I would say less than three months. Like I'm getting crazy quick timelines with you group three. 
And then we have the 12th house of surrender. So this person is going to pull you all the way to the edge, all the way out of yourself and vice versa. You guys really kind of pull each other out um, of your shell. The 12th house with surrender, uh, the subconscious mind, dreams, uh, karma, baggage, trance states, the unseen, here, uh, healing and spiritual development. Um, so this is going to affect definitely your spiritual development, mind, body, soul. First house kind of talked about that a little bit with this kind of being a gateway and an entry point, but also your consciousness. Um philosophy as well with the first house. So this is this relationship is going to shift how you view relationships, how you view people. Um and it's it's giving like a little bit of hippie energy. It's giving like this kind of woo woo energy where it's like for someone who's very analytical, it can be hard to relate or explain this type of relationship but those of you who are ready to really deep dive into that like right brain spiritual aspect intuition feeling feminine goddess energy um this is going to be right up your alley and you're going to be very ready for it and by the goddess energy you know there's the god and there's the goddess within all of us so it's like your goddess aspect even if you are a man you still have goddess and god energy. So, spirit, what can you tell me about this person? What do they like? Yeah, this person has some very interesting ideas. We have free thinker and individualist. Free thinker says I make my own opinions. Individualist says I'm independent and self-reliant. So as cheesy as it sounds, the best way to get close to a person like this is literally just to be yourself because individualists have this ability to appreciate and connect with anyone as long as you're authentic. You could have totally different interests than an individualist or someone who's a free thinker, but they can appreciate you and enjoy you and I'll build on a connection with you and share something special with you once they see that you are authentic, even if like your beliefs are just polar opposite. If anything, free thinkers kind of see that as an opportunity to like keep their chops wet and to, um, you know, have like a friendly debate and deep intellectual conversations. Um, but this person is very unique. Um, it's giving a heavy Aquarius energy, I gotta say. It's giving like a, a vibe of a mad scientist, someone who has like these really out there ideas or beliefs or this is the kind of person that would literally, you would see them at work one day, the next day you come in and it's like, oh, we're so-and-so and it's like, oh, they put in their notice and they took their RV and they said they're gonna, you know, um, travel to all 50 states, <laughs> like something like that. <clears throat> Like, this is someone who really doesn't need, like, the validation of other people, and they don't check for it. It's just not needed. We have organized, attractive, and polite. So this person, polite, I'm always courteous and respectful. They value people, their time. And this person is really honest is something that keeps coming up with them. Spirit is saying, like, let them know this person is very honest because a relationship like this requires a lot of communication and honesty. And Spirit is saying you will have that a thousand percent with this person. They're trustworthy. They will be honest with you. Like, this is what I'm thinking, feeling, doing. This is what I believe. These are my intentions. Um, so they always keep it a thousand. This person also, they can have uncomfortable conversations I'm hearing. And then we have organized and attractive. Organized says, I like to keep things in a good working order. And attractive says, my looks attractive, a lot of attention. So this person is attractive and they may be that kind of person. You know, to be honest, for some of you, this person, they like uh, like a kind of a futuristic aesthetic. Um, like, I don't know what to use because I, I forget the word that this aesthetic is called but just like a futuristic aesthetic you'll know what I mean this person though they may dress very kind of out there they may be very unique and quirky but this person is so attractive like I didn't know I was attracted to this kind of person that's the response that a lot of people have to them like damn you're the exception or why am I so attracted to you and typically I go for this type 
they get a lot, a lot of attention. This person is definitely blessed in the looks department. Spirit, how is this coming together for group three? How is this coming together for group three? Well, there's a risk here. We got the seven of swords and the wheel of fortune. So no risk, no reward type of energy. Spirit is saying you're really taking a gamble on this person because interestingly enough, though they have the ability to provide you stability, um, it's not like stability in the sense that you'll never have to worry about paying bills. It's not stability in the sense that you'll know that this person is never going to change. It's this person's authenticity and honesty and foresight and organization that gives you security. Because even if there is a change happening, they'll communicate that to you. Or they're organized enough to have a plan as far as how they do things. So this person, they will take big risks like travel, you know, their country in an RV. But it'll be planned like this is the route we're taking. This is the weather's going to be like that over here. So we're going to go this way instead. Or this is where we're going to stay. This is, you know, we're going to stop here. We're going to stay at, you know, hotels. We're going to experience these things that are in this state or this area. That kind of energy. Like this person is organized but still kind of free. So it's very interesting. But there is a risk required for you to engage in this relationship because some of you are just not ready. And, you know, there's such a release of like that first house programming that has been put on you from society and in school and having to play into a hierarchy. That's one thing that I value the most about myself. I've gone through eight different schools. <laughs> I've gone to eight different schools and like um, up until senior year, eight different schools. So I was constantly switching schools. So I never had to surrender to any hierarchy because I wasn't staying anywhere long enough. I was always the new kid as well. So I always had like a good position. You know what I mean? But for people who do, people who gone, you know, have lived in the same state or city from elementary all the way till high school or people who've stayed, you know, for four years in, in one space, you learn to conform to a degree. And so this person is coming in to undo all of that. But some of you, honestly, some of you just don't want it, with, especially with the second house of assets, because you're like, okay, what am I going to have to surrender to engage in this relationship? I'm going to have to give up my position, um, you know, in my career, or I'm going to have to give up, you know, this car that I worked hard for, or this home that I worked hard for, this position in society, this respect, whatever it is you've gained up until this point. But that attachment to those things has been what has caused you to need this healing from Chiron and why this person is coming through to give you the spicy encounter in the first house, your house of self, because something isn't right there. And when it's all you have, even if it's not right, you'll cling to it. But Wheel of Fortune, Seven of Swords, you are going to have to take a risk and be uncomfortable to engage in this relationship because it provides security, but a different kind of security. Seven of Pentacles in reverse is, you know, taking everything that you have and releasing it, Queen of Pentacles in reverse. There's so much risk it feels here. I'm going to turn this over just so you can get the vibe of the artwork on the cards to be able to tell what they mean. But Seven of Pentacles, it's like, you know, you've, you've planted seeds and they've grown and you're able to harvest them slowly but surely at this position. It's not fully where you want to be, but it's still a good position. And then Queen of Pentacles is like, everything that you have specifically worked for and also attachments, spiritual attachments and attachments based on your own desires or who you are up until this point. And with both of those being in reverse, spirit is saying, you know, this would be like kind of stepping into a whole new path. Three of Swords in reverse, which is good. So Spirit is saying, listen, this is not gonna, you know, be a waste of your time. This is this is an opportunity that is well worth it. King of Swords. I think 
I think the best way to go about this connection with this person is to honestly just take the time. Just take the time. Instead of trying to get them to tell you, which they will, King of Swords is a good communicator, air energy. Um, but instead of trying to get them to, to comfort you or to become comfortable with what you see, I think it's just going to take time. Like this is something that has to be, you know, like felt and experienced. This isn't a connection that you can, or this isn't, it's not about the connection. Like this isn't a opportunity that you can take without just actually having the evidence. Like I know this person is de dependable. You know what I mean? Like you can't just ask them, I mean, what if this happens? You know, it's not going to feel like enough. There's still going to be that weight on your conscious, on your spirit, like feeling like this was the wrong decision for me or something that I shouldn't have done. But eight of swords in reverse, two of swords in reverse, this does have to be chosen and fearlessly committed to. So this is very interesting. This person coming in, it's kind of like, feels like an ultimatum. It really is all or nothing. And it could be because this person is traveling or you would decide to travel with this person. You are going to come into um, you're going to come into meeting with this person and it's like both of you guys kind of decide like this is the life we want to live or this is what we want to do. It doesn't have to be physical travel as well. It could be spiritual travel. So it's like I'm not in my comfort zone in the realms like whatever I used to do for spirituality, I'm committing to a new belief system uh, or a new way of thinking and being in this relationship. So it could be travel in that way. Um, but we have the Four of Cups in reverse and the King of Wands. A lot of passion here. Love that they're showing up in King of Wands energy because that's someone who's very passionate and also someone who's very present. I'm hearing eye contact. That may be like a deal breaker for you. You have to be able to make eye contact with your person and vice versa. They can't be afraid of eye contact, maybe in the bedroom specifically. That's important for you. Three of Wands in reverse, Five of Wands in reverse, Five of Cups in reverse. So we got two repeating fives here. You may be seeing 505, 515, combinations of fives, zeros, ones. Um, but this was really unexpected. This kind of feels a little bit like a quantum leap. Um, but it's not a quantum leap. It's more of like a leap in a new direction. It's an opportunity to choose uh, a new path or to go on a new path. And I got that energy a little bit with group two as well. If you were called to that pile. Wow, we have Lady Nada with Heart Awakening. I see you guys really, really honoring your heart and sitting in your heart space and allowing yourself to just be stimulated in that way and feel secure in that way versus whatever way you had found security before, like maybe through your title or through your position. Uh, the Heart Awakening says, awaken to the acceptance and divine love, give and receive and balance. So this is a true partnership. It's not a situation where you um, benefit from this person a thousand percent. They benefit um, zero and vice versa, not a situation where like someone is giving and some, the other person is receiving, you're giving and receiving in balance in this connection. And you're awakening through that Chiron healing first house love that they're just pouring into you to acceptance of yourself and also receiving true divine love and its purest form where someone loves you because they love you, your soul, because they honor that magnetism, not because of all of these rituals you have and, you know, not because of all this work you put in and um, all that you have accomplished. So this is a true love opportunity. And then we have Mary Magdalene, the teacher awakens that says you have something important to share. Follow the inner call and don't let anything stop you. So you may end up going into mission with this person or this can cause a huge transformation. I mean, the first and the 12th house is huge transformation, which is why 12th house is surrender. Then you're back at the one, the house of soul. So spirit is calling you into a first house transformation where you change through being able to exercise and have this 
safe space um, where you can develop your new beliefs and kind of just be in your true beliefs and expand through living out authenticity. I love this reading so, so much. This was such a good pile. My Etsy shop is in the description. If you'd like a private tarot reading, that is where you can find me. I also have manifestation candles on there, custom work on there, all sorts of stuff. Uh, but yeah, you guys, that is what I have. I'll talk to you soon. All right, if you chose group four with the light blue reflective stone, this is your reading. We're using the Santa Muerte Tarot for you today. And we are going to see your next spicy encounter in love spirit. This is for group four. Where are they having this spicy encounter? Where are they receiving this spicy encounter? Oh, you know what? Okay, okay, okay. I'm not going to jump to conclusions, but I felt like something like this might come up today. Wow. You guys, I wonder, this kind of feels like you've been doing things to expand your consci consciousness. This could be microdosing. This could be taking certain things that have like effects, you know, mother ayahuasca. You could be um, doing like consciousness expanding or consciousness stimulating activities in this time. We have Neptune and we have Jupiter that has just come out. And I felt like before I did this reading, I was like, oh, I wonder if I'll get anything like, oh, anybody's been dealing with someone in another dimension or if there's any activity like that, that might show up today. And you guys did get a little bit of that. But we have the fourth house that has just come out, okay? Fourth house, the roots. Uh, fourth house is all about your home, your stability, the 3D world, also your inner world, of course. But fourth house would be like something tangible um, something that you can see and experience in this dimension. So no, I don't see that your next spicy experience is just going to be some like love affair in the dream space. <laughs> um, but we did get a little bit of that activity. You could be having a spiritual connection with someone where it's like um, your spiritual gifts are expanding through this person or you're realizing that you have certain spiritual gifts uh, through the connection of this person. Once you start to grow and expand personally and your spiritual gifts really start to turn on, they will be activated much more by certain people. It's like, you know, say you have the ability to like put a thought in someone else's mind. That can work easily on people who are just unaware and unprotected. But say you put a thought in someone else's mind, then they put a thought in your mind, and then you're realizing, oh my God, we have this space where we're communicating, where it literally feels as if we're talking to each other normally at how I can hear and receive the messages that they're sending to me. So it's like a heightened experience because it's a mutual experience. It's something that someone else also has as a gift and, you know, the ability to extend to you as well. So that is super cool. Uh, and then we got the third house at the bottom of the deck, your perception. Okay, let's break down this energy. Let's see what's going on. Let's start here with Neptune and Jupiter. So I definitely see you guys coupled up with Jupiter. Jupiter is synonymous with expansion and then Neptune with your dreams. Neptune is also the unconscious and subconscious. It says imagination, memory, subconscious, ideals, universal love. Visions, meditation, spirituality, fantasies, escapisms, the ether, enchantment, veils, and magic. So you guys, someone is putting a spell on you and you are also putting a spell on this person. I see you joining into a spiritual connection with someone where both of you have spiritual gifts and you're both charming each other with your spiritual gifts. So it's not just like, ooh, and I love to charm. I love, you know, to perform. I've always been like an extrovert like that. But what's better or not better, but equally as good is also being charmed and having someone, you know, kind of like sprinkle fairy dust over your reality and like put you in awe and wonder because they're pulling things out of their hat and, you know, surprising you with different experiences that you've never, you know, seen or had before. 
I just love this energy group for because you are also being pleased just as you're pleasing this person. And then we have Jupiter with expansion. It says enthusiasm, optimism, generosity, lux, travel, positivity, foreign cultures, pilgrimage, chance, expansion, leaping, exploration, and potential. So something about this connection feels risky or dangerous there could be a move or travel involved with this person you could have to travel to meet this person or go see this person your next spicy uh encounter may happen outside of your place that you live or outside of your hometown and may happen in a place that would be severely unexpected in a place that you've never had anything romantically pop off uh, a place that you wouldn't even expect anything to pop off at and then we have Taurus, the bombshell, earthy, practical, productive, fertile, worthy, ripe, pleasure-seeking, sensuous, possessive, tenacious, loyal, patient, deliberate. I love that you guys have all of these anchoring elements because it's like with something like Jupiter, which is all about expanding beyond your current limitations and space, your comfort zone, and Neptune that is beyond this 3D experience, to have that Taurian energy here where it's like, okay, this relationship is built on loyalty, trust, adventure, pleasure seeking, dependability. Like I love that earth. Uh, Taurus is also earth energy. I just love that we have that anchoring energy here. And then we have the fourth house with your roots and the third house with perception, which fourth house roots can also talk about going back to your hometown or your home country or um, a previous state of being. So if you have been, um, if you have been really feeling like I want to go back to when I was first spiritual and I was first receiving my first expansion and I was getting all this knowledge and information and I had the ability to also seek information further. Like if you have a desire to go back to a certain space, I see you getting that opportunity through this relationship. <clears throat> uh, family, home, background, comfort. Cooking, inner world, real estate, self-care, rejuvenation, habits, and your shell. So interestingly enough, this person still, you know, you still have like your own world and own life going on. You are safe in your own head. It's not like this person can literally read your Akashic records just by being in your presence. But I do see a lot of freaky, like a lot of freaky synchronicity being with this person. I do see like you guys literally finish each other's sentences or having experiences where it's like they say something that you were thinking like just like freaky but I don't feel like it's gonna be surface level like that I feel like it's gonna be very like very deep and different something that you couldn't even name unless you've truly already experienced it yourself we have the third house with the perception uh, speech, thoughts, social media, excursions, dating, research, street life, surroundings, and social ability. So this person could be moving you into a new social circle or social hierarchy or new social space. You may be getting some sort of clout or notoriety through being with this person if they have any sort of fame. Um, it did have dating on there to double down spirit reminding us like this is a romantic connection. You may be meeting this person through social media, though. Social media is on there. You could be either meeting this person through social media or deleting your social media after you're in this connection. Spirit, can you tell us about the person for group four coming in? Describe to us that person. <laughs> <laughs> we have generous and obsessed and when obsessed came out I was getting this energy of like well first of all I was hearing Mariah Carey obsessed but it's like you like it like it's like to this person you may roll your eyes and be like oh my god you're so extra you're mad Aggie but when you turn around you're Loki like it's lit. like there's an energy of you being like, oh my God, this person is always up my butt. Like, uh, they always on me. They always want to talk to me. Like, I know I'm fine, but they always want to be around me. Like, oh my God. But like low key, you really love it. <laughs> and you love that this person like worships the ground you walk on. 
generous i like spoiling you as much as i can obsessed i just can't seem to stop thinking about you is what that one says so they always want to talk to you they want to facetime they want to text they want to be near you they want to take you on a date they want to help you like even if it's like okay i gotta work like okay on your lunch break can i bring you food like i just want to do for you and be around you um obsessed i just can't seem to stop thinking about you this person is always daydreaming about you considering you even when they go to the store, they're like, okay, is there something in here that my person needs or that they want? They remember a lot of details and things. And I love that this is coming up. We have independent and competition. So they are someone who can entertain themselves. It's not that they don't have the ability to entertain themselves. It's not that they're attached to you at the hip. They're obsessed with you. They spend all their time thinking about you, planning, you know, when it comes to you wanting to just make it so you can have a better life and, you know, make it so things are as easy as possible for you. But we got common sense that came out as well. <laughs> so they have common sense. They don't literally try to take up all your time. They don't make their obsession with you your problem. Um, they get, you know, what they can, what you're willing to give to them. And they have common sense. They don't do too much. Uh, competition, I like to keep up with the Joneses. They don't mind a little healthy competition, though. I ain't even going to hold you. Like, this person will fight for you. And they are independent. I can do it all on my own is what it says on the card. I just heard they can cook for themselves. That's important for one of you. For someone I'm tapping into, your upbringing, you may come from a culture where women or feminines um, or the youngest in the house like always has to cook or do chores or clean and things like that. And the spirit just said that so clearly. And I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, this person can cook for themselves. They do cook for themselves. They're independent. They have their own job and things going on. So they're not literally expecting you to be like some sort of source of entertainment to them. But they do love you very much. This person is so attached to you. We have respectful and common sense. I love that that's coming through as well, respectful, because some of you may be a bit triggered by obsessive energy or people who are competitive. Um, so spirits coming through with that extra reinsurance, uh, reassurance. Common sense. I have a clear view on reality and respectful. I have respect for myself and others. So uh, they're respectful towards you. I just heard wait staff. They're respectful towards wait staff. Um, that may also be important for one of you. <clears throat> you may be a server or have been a server. So you need someone to understand um, that they have to be respectful of, you know, hardworking people. Three of Cups. So this person, honestly, they just want you to have fun. Like that is their main priority. They're always checking on you. Like, are you having fun? Are you good? Are you tired? Do you want to leave? Um, you really are their number one priority. Spirit, how is this coming together for group four? How is the spicy encounter coming together for group four? You guys may end up together in some sort of unconventional or unlikely situation. Knight of Cups in reverse is spirit saying this person is not approaching you first. You may be shooting your shot with them or the circumstance in which you meet them may not be romantic. Like the first time you talk may not be under romantic pretenses. This could be someone who's been watching you at school for a while, someone who's been watching you at the workplace for a while. This could even be like a professor or a teacher. Now listen, I'm talking like college plus. I'm not talking about no foolishness. Uh, under that but like someone who may be teaching you or the trainer someone who's supposed to help you like queen of wands in reverse you're not looking for love and knight of cups in reverse that's not the circumstance in which you meet you don't meet under like circumstances that are <clears throat> romantic you can meet this person by chance out and about 
Spirit. How is this relationship coming together? Wow, we got the Six of Wands. So Spirit really wants you to know all the work that you're doing right now, everything that you have been doing is positioning you for this romance, is positioning you for this opportunity and this connection. So if you've been feeling like you've been making a lot of progress, but the relationship itself or connection or, you know, nothing has just been like coming through, um, Spirit is saying everything is coming together. We also have the devil card in reverse. I got that a lot in 2022 where it's like rejection is protection, not even rejection though, just like stagnancy is protection. I kept getting like clear it, a uh, spirit speaking as clear as day saying like, if they're experiencing stagnancy right now, I'm keeping them TF out of the way, like, because it's going down. And it did a lot of relationships cracked. A lot of stuff just came out. That was just so crazy and like shocking. <clears throat> So spirit has been protecting you and keeping you out of the way, out of the mix, out of, you know, harm's way. We have the tower. Spirit, how is this relationship coming together? Clarify this tower for me. There's a lot of risk here. We got the queen of cups in reverse. Um... What is their hesitancy spirit? For some of you, seven of cups, because I'm like queen of cups in reverse. Like there's an aspect of you that is turned off by this connection, especially with the tower coming in. It could be the way that you're meeting this person. It's like, ugh, something about this doesn't feel right or something about this feels wrong or foreign. Again, this could be someone you have to travel for. So you're automatically vulnerable because you're meeting them in their space. Or this could be someone you met online, so it's like, this isn't like me, or this isn't something I would typically entertain, this isn't something I'm comfortable with, or this is someone outside of my culture, someone outside of who I would see myself with. And for some of you, Seven of Cups, it's just like, dang, I just got out of a relationship. Honestly, I just want like to date like to be treated and to date, not to be locked down again, you know, by someone who's obsessed with me and wants me, even if I want them back. I like some of you just want a different experience. You don't want this experience right now. We have the strength card in reverse. You may feel that you're not compatible with this person. This person may be a little bit older than you or a little bit younger than you. I would probably say younger. Um, just at how you don't get that vibe that this is supposed to happen. I would say five years plus, five years younger or five years older. There's some sort of deficit that's making you feel uncomfortable or it's that this person is totally different from you. Ace of Wands in reverse. It's like they don't have the same values or desires as me. They just want to raise that way. Like there's a level of incompatibility here. Page of Pentacles, it's like I would have to invest in something that's totally new and foreign to me. This would be <clears throat> an investment in a person or a lifestyle or in myself that would cause a lot of uncertainty or just uncomfortability because it's not anything strength and reverse that I've been exposed to or used to. It's not who I seen myself with. We did get the third house with perception and a lot of Neptunian and like right brain type of energy. So if you're someone who's really left brain, like more analytical, more facts based, less feeling based, more like this is the best for me or this is the best approach. Like if you're someone who's even a fixed sign or have a lot of fixed energy in your chart, a lot of earth energy, that anchoring energy in your chart, it may be hard for you to expand your mind enough to come together with this person. It's like, yeah, I love you. I feel that attraction. I keep saying love on accident. But yeah, I like you, you know, I feel that attraction. Yeah, I feel the sparks, but this isn't anchored enough for me. There, There's a little bit of that feeling here where it's like, oof, I need things to be a little more anchored in order to surrender to them fully, in order to really feel comfortable and take it seriously. Spirit, what else can you tell me for group four? Wow, we got Lord Ganesh with infinite abundance. And then we have Joan of Arc with the voice of truth. So authenticity is going to be important. You declaring and being honest about what it is that you want and need and letting spirit into your process. That may be also something that you don't typically do. <clears throat> 
You may entertain a reading here and there, but do you really let spirit into your process? Spirit, God, the divine, the higher power, whatever. That may not be something that you do. Infinite abundance. It says obstacles are being removed. Spiritual support and connections are increasing. So your guides are coming through to help you and to lead the way. Your spiritual team is like ready, ready for you to have a relationship, ready for this relationship specifically, ready to support you, ready for your growth into new territory and new things. Your guides may be switching out. If you've been feeling like random waves of sadness and emptiness, that's something that happens sometimes when you have a new guide step in and an old guide step out. So it's like a spiritual breakup. So you feel it all in the heart space and it's like, the most random thing can make you cry. Like something that's not even like sad like that, you know, can make you cry or your mood has just been, you know, destabilized. And you can also see like, you know what, I can see where there I've made some changes and how I'm positioning myself for change in the near future. You may have something like that going on. <clears throat> but then we also have Joan of Arc with the voice of truth. It says, stand strong, focus on your purpose, release the fear of persecution and speak your truth. So spirit is saying openly communicate about what it is you're feeling and what it is that you need. If you feel like I am uncomfortable in this area, let spirit know and let spirit into your process and into your relationship and further into your life, into your heart um, so that you can co-create and so that you can be supported in the way that you need. But that's what I got for you guys. My Etsy shop is in the description. If you'd like a private tarot reading, that is where you can find me. I also have custom spell work and manifestation candles, all sorts of, all sorts of stuff on there. Um, but that is what I have for you guys today. I'll talk to you soon.